All right, what's happening? Y'all just wanted to do a quick video to update y'all on the fact that Washington is not interested in Teddy Bridgewater, so all of us can take a sigh of relief. And, I mean, it seems fairly obvious because if you look at the situation with us bringing in Ryan Fitzpatrick, you already have Taylor Heineke, Kyle Allen, who I don't really want, but he's there. Steven Montez may essentially gain a Taysom Hill type of role within the offense. And Logan Thomas, our best tight end, also plays a little bit of quarterback. And then you have me hoping that we trade up for one of those top four guys. So I just don't see where Teddy Bridgewater could fill in at. I mean, if anything, he would be a bridge quarterback. That's what Ryan Fitzpatrick is here for. And Ryan Fitzpatrick has shown that he can play at a higher level than a Teddy Bridgewater can. Especially if we're talking about what have you done for me lately? Ryan Fitzpatrick for the Dolphins, Teddy Bridgewater for the Panthers. Ryan Fitzpatrick is easily the cheaper option. Ryan Fitzpatrick is easily the better option. And then on top of that, Ryan Fitzpatrick was for free, free agent, a free agent. Teddy Bridgewater, you have to trade for him. So, I mean, that's just super deep. Even if Teddy Bridgewater and Ryan Fitzpatrick were both free agents and they were both asking for the same money, hypothetically, with Ryan Fitzpatrick's getting 10 mil base, with it potentially going up to 12 mil, I would still prefer Ryan Fitzpatrick. And then the fact that you have to trade for Teddy Bridgewater is crazy. And of course, what started all of this is that Sam Darnold was traded to the Panthers. Thank goodness, I don't have to worry about us possibly going to go get a Sam Darnold. And I'm not one of those people that's extremely low on Sam Darnold and is just assuming that him possibly becoming a good quarterback at the NFL level is just impossible. I don't feel that way, but also coming out of the draft, before he was even drafted, before the Jets even ruined him, I wasn't that high on Sam Darnold. I'm higher on Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, and Trevor Lawrence coming out of the draft than I was on Sam Darnold coming out of USC. So either way it goes, I prefer those guys over Sam Darnold, but then now we've seen what Sam Darnold has gone through, and I'm a big believer of damaged goods. I mean, granted, he may go somewhere else and work out. I'm not saying that he won't, but it's just really hard for quarterbacks once your confidence is shot once you've experienced a lot of down it's hard for you to start to have ups because sports is pretty much like 80 percent confidence and work ethic like all the mental things it's only really about 20 percent talent in my opinion and it's just one of those things once you every day you're giving it your all you're doing your very best and it still doesn't work out you're still throwing interceptions you're still losing plenty of games every season it's hard to learn to trust yourself again you know what i'm saying confidence is very key in football more so in basketball because i mean if you really think about it it's kind of off topic i'm digressing but anybody in the nba even the worst guy in the nba could go play any pickup game anywhere and drop 80 but when you get to the nba level it's all about chemistry confidence and rhythm everybody in the nba can ball i mean you get shot free throws right now he can hit them. the nba is just a different type you have to withstand pressure you have to withstand guys being as good as you everywhere if not better and literally the best way to fight all of that and to overcome all of that is confidence. And even going back to football, especially the quarterback position, which is as close to basketball as it gets as far as like power and how much confidence matters. Cornerback as well. Confidence is huge. But you need confidence. I mean, because quarterback and cornerback are the two hardest positions to transition from college to the NFL level and see success, especially immediately. That's why quarterbacks and corners usually have to develop. It's really hard for a corner and a quarterback to just come out year one balling. It's just a lot of it is confidence. Of course, there's like an adjustment in level of talent and level of competition. But again, confidence is a big key in it. I mean, and Sam Darnold isn't any less talented than he was coming out of USC. But the reason that a lot of us project him to not do so well, even for the Panthers, now that he has Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Joe Brady, most importantly. If there is one of the very few teams that may be able to get greatness out of Sam Darnold, it may be the Panthers. But at the same time, is his confidence shot or not? I don't wish any ill will on Sam Darnold. I wish him the best. I would love for him to go out there and prove everybody wrong. But again, for my burgundy and gold, I'm as objective as possible. I mean, even with a lot of my Georgia Bulldogs. I love my Georgia Bulldogs, but I don't want them to come to the Burgundy and Gold just because I like them or just because they're a Georgia Bulldog. If I don't feel like they fit where Washington is going, what we need, I don't want them. I don't show any bias towards players I want to come to our team at all. Everything is in the best interest of my Burgundy and Gold at the end of the day. And Teddy Bridgewater and Sam Darnold just don't align with where I see our franchise going. And Back to my original main point about the Sam Darnold situation is that I'm happy that we didn't get him because that would have pretty much eliminated all possibilities of trading up. I still don't believe it's likely we're going to see. what We definitely won't make a trade before the draft. It's going to be more so guys will get taken, the draft will continue, and we'll see at four or seven 
who's available. If Lance is available at seven, I think it may actually be pretty likely that we do trade up. But before then, I don't think it's likely. But still, I don't think trading up is just likely in general, especially where we stand today. But if you trade for a Sam Darnold and give away all of those picks, trading up is literally impossible. You're done. Because first of all, you're trading for Sam Darnold to be your, we groom him and he may be the future of this franchise guy anyway. So what's the point in taking one of those higher quarterbacks? And then secondly, once you trade those picks away, what picks do you have to trade away to move up? I mean, granted to move up to seven and especially four, you're gonna have to package in a few first, but you may also need those picks that the Panthers just gave away to the Jets. That sixth this year, second and fourth next year may have to be included in a package for Washington to trade up to number seven or potentially maybe even number four if they love a guy that much and are willing to part ways with that much value. Doubt it, but I hope. And there's some interesting ways to view this Darnold situation because like, first of all, I agree with Mike Renner from Pro Football Focus that the Darnold trade means that there's a 100% chance that the Falcons told the Panthers, we're not listening to anything you're offering because the Panthers have clearly shown interest in possibly trading up. And for them to trade for Darnold, it's basically like, man, we exhausted all options. Nobody's willing to trade down with us in the Falcons who would be the ideal spot for them because they're already eight. So why would they trade up to number seven necessarily? So if they wanted to trade up and get their guy, they would want to trade up to number four and the Falcons hold number four. And with there being a division rivalry, you never expect those trades to happen. I mean, you don't really expect us to trade up to where the Cowboys, Eagles, or Giants are because teams just rarely trade within a division. Why would they want to see you rise up and take a great player? They're going to do everything they can to stop one another from getting a higher draft pick. So you can just tell that the Panthers called everybody that they could, including the Falcons, and the Falcons were like, hey, man, we're willing to trade back, but not to y'all. So y'all going to have to figure something else out, and that's what the Panthers did. They figured something else out, went and got Darnold, they'll see how that goes. They're also actively shopping Teddy Bridgewater, so that means that they're assuming Sam Darnold will probably be the starter week one. Even though I feel like Teddy isn't a bad backup, but they said they are heavily shopping Teddy Bridgewater. Again, luckily, we're not one of the teams interested. Austin Gale from Pro Football Focus also had another good point. Even on top of all of the reasons that I feel like we need to trade up for a quarterback, the main one for me is I'm tired of being average. I don't want to go 8-8 eight and eight over and over again. Winning a division doesn't mean much to me at all. I want to win Super Bowls. That's all that matters to me. And I feel like we need a top quarterback to do so. Because if you look around the NFL, like I've said in a lot of my comment sections, live streams, and videos, if you look around the NFL and all of these teams that are supposedly better than us that went to the playoffs last year and made noise in the playoffs if you look at their rosters they honestly have more if anything bigger holes than we have as a total team they just have way better quarterback play and it drastically raises their chances of winning games especially when it gets to the postseason where the margin of error is way smaller way thinner and sometimes you just need a quarterback to bail your team out the best defense in the nfl can have an off game sometimes as we saw with the buccaneers our defense didn't play as well as they played against the steelers and in the 49ers and things like that. And Taylor Heineke played well, but first of all, who knows if we're gonna get that out of Taylor Heineke again. And secondly, I still wanna shoot for higher than that. Taylor Heineke played well against the Buccaneers, but I want a quarterback that plays even better than that. So that's one of my main reasons for wanting to trade up for a quarterback, tired of being average. I don't wanna just win games. I don't wanna go nine and seven over and over again. And with that, we're never gonna have a high enough draft pick to take a top quarterback anyway. And every year we go into the draft assuming, well, only these amount of teams may need a quarterback anyway. So the thought process of, well, we'll just wait till next year because after all of these quarterbacks get drafted, nobody's going to need a quarterback next year. You never know what happens. Injuries, guys don't play as well as they thought. We've seen teams draft a quarterback in the first round, early first round, and turn around and draft another first round quarterback the following year. It's been happening lately, and I just don't want to chance it. This is the highest I've ever been in a quarterback class ever since I've been like fully studying and really watching film and really scouting quarterbacks and like grading them and taking notes and ranking them and things like that. This is easily by far the highest I've been on any quarterback class in like the past 10 years. I feel like honestly, all of these guys from even Mac Jones, who I don't like as much, would be QB1 in a lot of other quarterback drafts. And I feel like this is your best chance to get a real franchise changing guy. I do not have any faith that the draft will come anywhere near close as this one. And next draft, you may have to trade up to number one or two to get one of the good guys. Whereas this draft has like four and you may be able to get one at seven. And like I said, I'm expecting us to win a good amount of games in the foreseeable future. So I feel like we're always gonna be picking 
pick 19 or lower for the next few years. So if you don't trade up now, when do you? Do you try to luck up and get a Tom Brady? How rare is that? Do you try to luck up and get a Russell Wilson? How rare is that? First of all, that's never going to happen again. Russell Wilson only went that late in his draft because of his height. We saw him ball out in college. We all knew he should be great, but teams were prejudiced against him because of his height. And we've seen that teams will never make that mistake again because we've seen Baker Mayfield and Colin Murray both go number one overall. If Russell Wilson never happened, I believe wholeheartedly Baker Mayfield would have never went first overall. Russell Wilson paved the way for those guys. Franchises are smarter, GMs are smarter, teams are smarter. They won't make those mistakes again. And then I just dare you to find another Dak Prescott, another Tom Brady. I dare another franchise. I dare you to do it within my lifetime. But I digress again. Pro Football Focus, Austin Gale, talked about how even if you draft the quarterback high and it doesn't work out, you can recoup a lot of great assets from your quarterback. Sam Darnold was traded for a second, fourth, and a sixth even as terrible as he's been some of the worst quarterback play over the past few years just period still got a second fourth and a sixth for him Carson Wentz was abysmal last season still got a first and a third for him Josh Rosen just I mean hasn't even looked competent still got a second and a fifth I mean at least Carson Wentz showed greatness at one point in time at least Sam Darnold you can look at it and be like okay there's this ceiling that's still kind of there and we can probably mold him to become that Josh Rosen has always just been meh and he was still traded for a second and a fifth so why not take a chance on the quarterback because you can always recoup a lot of the assets so let's trading up multiple first round picks to get a guy and then he doesn't work out but a lot of people make it seem like those first round picks just disappear we get nothing back you can still potentially trade the guy as long as he's not even as bad as a Sam Darnold, you should be able to get potentially like a first round pick for him. And Dwayne Haskins is different because that was work ethic and we ended up cutting him. That's completely different. And then I don't like the argument of first round quarterbacks haven't worked out very well because I wouldn't have made the same mistakes that the Burgundy and Gold have made. So for me, I love Lance Wilson Lawrence Fields. I didn't love Haskins. I didn't think he was that. I didn't think he was a first round quarterback. I wanted Brian Burns and Montez Sweat in that draft class. I didn't think RG3 would work out long term. He was injury prone in Baylor. He wasn't a good throw. He had an arm that needed to be developed, more so than even Trey Lance's. So I don't understand how people were so hyped for RG3 now with Lance. Even after Josh just came out, who's my closest comp to him, Josh Allen was more raw than Lance coming out. And we've seen how great Josh Allen has been. And even while he was terrible and one of the least accurate quarterbacks I've ever seen at the NFL level the Bills were still able to win games because they leaned on their run game Josh Allen's ability to run and their defense I can argue our defense is definitely better than the Bills I can argue our run game is potentially going to be better than theirs and Trey Lance again is less raw than Josh Allen coming out of college especially since Quincy Avery's been working with him we saw how at the pro day his mechanics and a few things were cleaned up a little bit more still not great Still wrong some aspects, but you can win games with Trey Lance week one just by running an offense that's very run heavy, play action heavy. He ran a lot of play action out of a pro style offense all of the time. Single back, eye formation. He wasn't a shotgun anywhere near as much as a lot of these other top quarterbacks. And like I said, I love Lance, Fields, Wilson, and Lawrence. I would be honored to take all of them. Lance is my favorite because he has the highest ceiling out of all four in my opinion. But I would be honored to have a Fields. First of all, I think Fields is going to be great and he's from Atlanta. So that's where I'm biased a little bit. But first of all, I hate the don't draft Ohio State quarterbacks argument because, first of all, none of these quarterbacks were projected to be as good as Justin Fields. I mean, you can even take it back to the fact that he's not even an Ohio State prospect. He was a Georgia Bulldog transferred to Ohio State. So it's not even like these are the guys that Ohio State recruits. And then Justin Fields, first of all, is nowhere near Dwayne Haskins. Complete opposite. He's more accurate coming out of college, far more athletic and mobile, potentially the fastest quarterback in his draft class after he ran that 40. I didn't even think he was that fast. And then, most importantly, a lot of people are going around saying before these recent rumors way back a lot of people were saying that he has the best work ethic the best intangibles the best leadership skills out of this entire draft class of quarterbacks and there were even reports that Ron Rivera and company love Justin Fields work ethic and it's potentially their guy in the draft just because of that not because of what he does on the field but off the field wise and then of course everybody loves Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence because they all just look like they're going to be ballers I just feel like if we don't get one of these guys we're going to regret it and again my biggest fear is not being terrible my biggest fear is being perpetually eight and eight for the rest of my life don't want to do that Jim Nagy also had a good point too he said that he would be surprised if the Panthers decision to trade for Sam Darnold 
doesn't have something to do with the Niners targeting Mac Jones. Because even if they couldn't trade up to the Falcons' number fourth pick, because the Falcons are like, what do you, who do you think we are? We're not going to trade within the division and allow you to get a franchise quarterback that we're going to have to play against twice a year. But even then, they could have just sat in and potentially got Mac Jones. Mac Jones is expected to slide. Well, at least he should, based on his talent. But there are rumors that the 49ers do like Mac Jones, and that's who they traded up for which is pretty funny to me, but hey, that's a good thing for Burgundy and Gold. He's out the way. That allows Justin Fields and Trey Lance to potentially slide further. But that's pretty funny, and it adds up that the Niners may potentially be taking Mac Jones, and the Panthers already know at number eight, we're more than likely not going to be able to get a Trey Lance or Justin Fields because they're either going to get taken by the teams in front of us or a team may trade up in front of us to get them. And we're at an ugly spot of number eight where we don't know if we should trade up or not. And they probably just were like, man, I don't feel like dealing with this headache. Let's just go ahead and get a guy and then we'll figure it out later, which I'm very glad the Burgundy and Gold did not do. But that adds up. The Falcons being petty and not wanting to trade within a division, which makes a lot of sense. And Mac Jones potentially going to the 49ers and not making it to the eighth pick with the Panthers adds up. It all makes sense. It all comes full circle. And I hope it's true. I really hope Mac Jones goes to the 49ers with Justin Fields and Trey Lance can fall. Honestly, I know Ron Rivera and the guys say that everything is on the table, but I'm pretty sure as of today, they may not plan on moving up. But if a Trey Lance or Justin Fields is available at seven, then I'm pretty sure they will heavily consider it, especially Trey Lance, because we sent the maximum amount of guys that you can send to a pro day to Trey Lance's. We did not do that with any other pro day. And it's not even like it's Alabama's pro day where you're also there to watch Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddle, and all of these guys, or Florida where you're there to watch Kyle Pitts, Kadarius Tony. It was literally just Trey Lance and Dylan Redooms. That was literally it. So they were clearly there. Like I'm willing to bet money for Trey Lance. And we've been saying even before the pro day that Trey Lance out of these top four guys fits what Scott Turner wants to do the best. We can argue up and down whether or not Trey Lance is going to be the best out of the top four guys, but easily just based on what he did in college, his physical attributes, his gifts, his natural given talent, he is the best fit for what Scott Turner wants to do with this offense. So it makes sense that we sent as many people as we could to that pro day. I'm pretty sure if we could have sent more than the max of three guys, we probably would have sent even more. Because a lot of other teams that went there only sent like one or two maybe. There's clear interest in Trey Lance, but I also do feel like Ron Rivera is not going to force it. And even if he does, I love the fact that he's holding his cards close to him and not letting other teams know that he plans on trading up. If he is, the only way that teams would know is that he's calling them and inquiring about possibly trading up. But it's not like just out there in the news and reports that Washington plans on trading up because that can make things very hard on us, especially teams behind us that may also want to trade up. They can use that information against us. So we'll see when we get there. But those are just a few of my thoughts on the whole Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Darnold and trading up for a quarterback situation. Again, I don't like the whole Justin Fields, Ohio State quarterback thing because none of these other guys were supposed to even be great. Like JT Barrett went undrafted. Braxton Miller was drafted in the third round as a wide receiver. Cardell Jones was drafted in the fourth round. He was the ninth quarterback taken. Terrell Pryor was drafted in the third round, the eighth quarterback taken. And Troy Smith was drafted in the fifth round, the ninth quarterback taken. The expectations for Justin Fields and the love for him as a prospect is way higher than any of those other guys. And again, Dwayne Haskins, to most of us, did not feel like he was worthy of going in the first round. Him or Daniel Jones. That was just a terrible quarterback class. Once he was here, I was like, we might as well make the best of it, do everything we can to get the most out of him because he is talented. But... I was nowhere near as high on Dwayne Haskins or RG3 as I am on Lance Fields, Lawrence, and Wilson, period. You get Fields and you can just work on him being too aggressive. My biggest pet peeve with Justin Fields' game and his tape is that he feels like he's just that guy. He's just always trying to throw it into these ridiculously tight windows, great coverage for no reason. And it's crazy because I feel like my biggest pet peeve for Trey Lance is that he's too passive. Granted, his receivers were always open. And even then, when there was a play to be made, when there was a throw that may be available, he just took the easier option. Option. I mean, again, I can't be mad at him. That was probably how the offense was supposed to be ran. That's probably what the coaches told him to do. But it's crazy that Fields is too aggressive and we need to bring him down a little bit. And Lance right now is too passive and we need to get him a little bit more aggressive. And those are all very teachable things. Now, they may not be good at working on those things day one. But again, with how athletic those guys are, you can clearly win games day one with those guys but of course with us Ryan Fitzpatrick being the assumed starter Taylor Heineke being the assumed backup Trey Lance or Justin Fields wouldn't have to come here and play week one and I don't like the argument that fans 
aren't patient enough for that where what you gonna do you're gonna go be a fan of another team like what does that mean why does Ron Rivera have to care what the fans think about the quarterback situation and I love the fact that Trey Lance threw zero interceptions for an entire season but his team was the Alabama of that conference which granted all of these quarterbacks almost were arguably out of these top quarterbacks including Mac Jones really the only time any of these quarterbacks played against a team better than theirs was Trevor Lawrence against Ohio State and Ohio State versus Alabama. Other than that, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, everybody almost all of the time went against teams that were worse than their teams. Their receivers were better than the opposing team's DBs. Their offensive line were better than the opposing team's defensive line. Almost all of the time, period. I love that point that Daniel John Meyer brought up. Now, granted, there's different levels. Like, Mac Jones' team was clearly superior to everybody else's, and Trey Lance's with North Dakota State was the same thing at the lower level. But still, at the end of the day, it's not like Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Trevor Lawrence were just going against defenses that were better than their offenses all the time. And with that Ohio State Pro Day, and with Martin Mayhew and Scott Turner going to it, that's two out of three allowed. There were a lot of Pro Days going on at the same time, and they chose to be at Ohio State, so... That should say something about Justin Fields as well. And I think we're not in danger of getting a Mac Jones. Ron Rivera and Scott Turner have spoken clearly about how much mobility matters in this offense. Even before the offseason, just throughout the season, when they were complimenting Kyle Allen and Taylor Heineke, they brought up mobility so much. There's no way they're just going to go back to a Dwayne Haskins or Alex Smith when he was hurt. Just the lack of mobility there. Mina Combs brings up a good point that every successful quarterback drafted since 2015 has been mobile, period. And I don't think Matt Jones is as immobile as a lot of people make him out to be because where you need mobility the most is in the pocket and he's relatively mobile there like he has good footwork but when things break down and he has to make off schedule plays he is terrible and that's what i worry about and again i feel like he's not even on rivera and scott turner's radar so it's really not much of a point to bring up a mac jones oh oh yeah and another thing with the ohio state thing name a good lsu quarterback before joe burrow even before Tua, who hasn't worked out name a good alabama quarterback i mean now you have mac jones who has Tua behind him but Tua hasn't really even worked out i still believe he's talented but still name a good oregon quarterback before justin herbert oklahoma with jalen hurts has sam bradford baker mayfield and kyler murray so i'll give people that one there's that one college that's produced some. Name a good quarterback at Clemson before Deshaun Watson. Trevor Lawrence has Deshaun Watson. That's it. Name a good quarterback from BYU before Zach Wilson. Trey Lance has Carson Wentz. That's as good as that's gotten. We can even go for further back. I mean, Jared Goff from California had Aaron Rodgers. That's it. But before Aaron Rodgers, name a quarterback from California that was just great. Dak Prescott from Mississippi State. Name a quarterback before Dak Prescott from Mississippi State that worked out very well. That became a franchise quarterback. Same thing with Texas Tech. Name a great Texas Tech quarterback before Pat Mahomes. Josh Allen. Name a good Wyoming quarterback before Josh Allen. Name a good quarterback out of Miami of Ohio before Big Ben. North Carolina the state before Philip Rivers, Utah before Alex Smith, Boston College before Matt Ryan, all you really have is Matt Hasselbeck, my Georgia, Matthew Stafford before then, Auburn before Cam Newton, and he transferred there, Texas A&M before Ryan Tannehill, Wisconsin before Russell Wilson, like, I don't know why people picked Ohio State, I mean, I guess for our fan base because of Dwayne Haskins, but quarterbacks have been taken from these colleges before these quarterbacks came from them and worked out. And it's the same exact situation like I spoke about with Justin Fields where these other guys before him weren't even expected to be this good. The expectations for Justin Fields coming out of the draft are way higher than anybody else before him. Similar to Dak Prescott with Mississippi State, Russell Wilson with Wisconsin, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to keep bringing up the fact that, I mean, if you look at other teams, what other team is just perfect out here? People keep talking about we need to build the roster, make it better, fill all of our big major holes and things like that. But if you look around the NFL, which team doesn't have holes? All of these other teams are winning games because their quarterback play is elevating the team. That's it. Our defense is better than most of these teams arguably the best in the nfl especially potentially william jackson added and after the draft all offensive line is nowhere near as bad as a lot of people make it out to be i don't think it's the sixth best in the nfl like pro football focus says but i definitely think it's top half of the league and i would love to add some more talent you know if cornelius lucas and west schweitzer become backups because sadiq charles 
outplays Wes Schweitzer, and we bring in a guy, draft a guy, trade for a guy, sign a guy that ends up being better than Cornelius Lucas, now we have potentially one of the deepest offensive lines in the NFL. But at the end of the day, if we need to go into next season with the exact offensive line we had last year, we're good enough. That's a good enough offensive line to win a Super Bowl with. Our receiving core, way better than last season. Not the greatest in the NFL, but I would argue our receiving core going into this next season is better than what the Bills had last season with Stephon Diggs and Cole Beasley and John Brown. I'll take Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, and Adam Humphreys over those guys. And potentially who we may end up bringing in the draft. You never know what Cam Sims, Kelvin Harmon may end up looking like. Logan Thomas is one of the better tight ends in the NFL. Would be very nice to get a second good tight end. We'll see what Thaddeus Moss is looking like. We'll see how we'll approach tight end in the draft. Because I know Scott Turner wants to run two tight end sets. We just haven't been able to. Because Jeremy Sprinkle hasn't been good enough. And I love Antonio Gibson and JD McKissick. We need another guy to be like the bruiser to take carries away from Antonio Gibson. So he's not getting beat up. But you can solve that potentially with just an undrafted free agent but again at the end of the day really our biggest needs are tight end to linebacker and free safety we can always sign a Malik Cooker or a Trey Boston and let them compete with a Jeremy Reeves and whoever comes out on top between those three if you just bring in one or you bring in both of them or or draft the guy Javon Holland Travon Morick and there's plenty of options for linebackers in the draft and for agency and again we had the number two defense last year with Cole Holcomb and John Bostick being your two starters in the nickel defense, which we ran 60% of the time or more. And again, if you look at other teams, these other teams have just as many holes as ours, if not more, or if anything, bigger holes at certain positions, but they just have better quarterbacks, and that's why they're playoff teams and consistent Super Bowl contenders. Also, Tay and Todd from the Tay and Todd Washington Football Podcast. Make sure y'all follow them on Twitter, Tay in the letter N Todd Podcast. They brought up a good point that Rivera has been counseling with Bill's GM, Brandon Bean, and head coach Sean McDermott to model the Washington football team rebuild after the rebuild they had. And which is perfect because, again, I comp Trey Lance to Josh Allen before I even knew this, before I even heard about this. So that's what makes that just so perfect. But Ron Rivera has been speaking to them regularly. And the way they've been winning games, good to great defense, solid receiving core with one guy who sticks out above the rest, Terry McLaurin to Stephon Diggs. Not the best O-line in the NFL, but definitely not the worst. Same to ours. Somewhere in the middle, maybe even itching closer towards the top than to the bottom. And then a quarterback that can both run and throw the ball. And the Bills, where they are today, without being aggressive about getting their quarterback. Granted, they went from 12th to 7th, and we would have to go from 19th to 7th. But I'm willing to throw in some more picks to get our guy. And it's crazy because, like, Lance, Fields, Wilson, and Lawrence are all, like, for the most part, according to most people, like, these top guys that should all go within like the top seven picks but Josh Allen when he was taking his seventh people thought it was a super reach and there's a reason why there's a reason why people are higher on Trey Lance coming out of college than they were on Josh Allen for the most part not everybody because I would say Josh Allen was able to read defenses better he worked through progressions more coming out of college but Trey Lance is more polished in pretty much every other way in my opinion as far as running a pro style offense IDing potential blitzers and changing protections at the line of scrimmage, accuracy, footwork, mechanics. Again, all of these need work, but he was better at all of these coming out of college than Josh Allen was at a way younger age too. And he's basically Josh Allen, slightly less arm, but a pretty large amount more speed to him, in my opinion. And again, if the Bills can make it work with Josh Allen, why can't we? And you can clearly tell that Ron Rivera is thinking the same thing. Because why else would he be talking to the Bills GM and head coach constantly this offseason? I mean, that's just so random. If he's trying to rebuild the same way they did, there's no way he thinks that just possibly getting a guy in the later rounds is going to do that. Maybe he may be forced to try it because trading up may cost too much and he may not be willing to do that or teams may be lowballing them and asking for too much just because they may feel like we're desperate and Ron Rivera may go with a plan B. But I could see how this could potentially be a plan A. And the Falcons and the Lions actively been talking to teams about trading down. So it's not like we're trying to convince them to trade down and we're going to have to give up more value for it. We just need to come to them with the right price and they'd be willing to do it. They're open to trading down now. Now down to 19, of course, there's definitely a big argument against that. But if you give them enough value and they can see the future and 
like we got all these first round picks now we can build with that because the falcons could easily turn around and have the same rebuild that the dolphins had but while already having a good quarterback that should still play at a relatively high level for at least the next three to five years so if you could just pull the miami dolphins and just have all kinds of first round picks i believe that's what the lions are trying to do right now so this is gonna be fun man make sure y'all stay in tune for that but yeah man that's my thoughts on a lot of the situations going on with the quarterback position teddy bridgewater sam Darnold, and why we should trade up this video ended up going way longer than i expected i'm not gonna lie please get in this comment section and let me know how you feel about everything i discussed i know a lot of y'all are gonna disagree but it's always fun to debate back and you know show y'all with facts why i feel how i feel there's a lot more facts that i didn't even bring up in this video so when we get in the comment section and start debating be ready for those facts and make sure you bring yours and please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything please subscribe if you haven't hit the bell next to the description button so you get notification every time i release an informative video and opinionated video like this one and definitely stay tuned for more film sessions two more mock drafts all of the live streams y'all already know man stay tuned for all of the off-season content this is when i do my best work and also of course for those of y'all who don't know i live stream rounds one through five every year for the draft so definitely pull out for that as well and as always man i really appreciate all of the support everybody that pulls up to every video every stream leaves a like shares it out to other people to get more people to join the street scores family and of course man i really really appreciate everybody that donates Big shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors whose name she's scrolling on the screen right now. Really appreciate all of y'all. I hope y'all are enjoying your extra benefits that the normal public don't get. Most notably, the longer version of film sessions. I promise I will be coming out with more before and after the draft. So stay tuned for that. Catch y'all later. I'm out.